Tyson Kozak joining us here as Prospects Challenge ramps up tonight with Buffalo taking on Montreal. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Good. It's been... Uh, I'm going to do this. Though. I'm going to move you oh, up a little bit. Okay. So, Professionalism at its finest. Well, I feel no, like that's... We, we want to hear the young man. We want to hear what he has to say. Well, we don't need to hear us, so we'll put it on you. How would you describe this last year for you development-wise, contract-wise, being here right now? What's it all been like? Yeah, it was definitely a, a very big year for me back in uh, back in Portland. I uh, had a very uh, successful year and took a big step in my development. And I owe it all to my uh, coaches back in Portland and uh, my teammates and all them just put me in good situations and helping me succeed. Well, you can name them by name if you want to give them a little bit more of a <laughs> shout out. Yeah, like Mike Johnston, Don Hay, Brian Pellerin. Those are my coaches last year. And then my teammates for most of the year were uh, Cross Hannes, who's with uh, Detroit, and uh, Marcus Nguyen, guys like that, young guys, so they really helped me out throughout the year, and I owe it all to them. Nice. Uh, off the air, we were talking now about... Now you got him paranoid uh, no, about the it's cable. it's not me, it's Weezy, but <laughs> we were talking off the air about Brian Kilray, how he's been around the game oh, yeah. forever. Yeah. Don Hay has been around for a long time. I still remember he coached me in an all-star game. Back in the days where he was Kamloops coach, I believe, yeah. in the uh, Darcy Tucker days oh, and yeah. uh, taking care of business with the white towels days over there. But anyway, um, so what is some of the things that this group and especially experienced coaches like Don Hay have, have helped you develop to be able to come here at Prospect Challenge and say that, hey, I've taken a step forward? Uh, yeah, like Mike Johnston, he really preaches on you to like act like a pro, be a pro, like just come in every day, put your work in, don't waste any time. And Don Hayes, the exact same way, he'll, he pushes you to your limit in practice. Yeah. And even in the weight room, he'll come in and just try and push you. So it's, it's awesome. I remember if I, we did one practice the year that we did the All-Star game, it was one of the hardest practice I'd ever done because Don was literally like, just go, go, go. It was yeah. always going. Um, is, is that how your game is are you the kind of the player that just likes to go 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 how do you feel when you're in a game setting not a practice setting but a game setting and your style of play yeah i think for me i just like to keep it going all the time bring a lot of energy physicality stuff like that just don't quit hound on the puck so just keep going and going you just went through a morning skate here today what are your morning skates like in junior from an intensity standpoint um Definitely not as intense as that practice was, that's for sure. <laughs> Usually. It, it was, it, so it was special teams driven, obviously, yeah. right from yeah. the start, which I don't know whether that surprises me or not. I mean, probably not based on what we learned about Seth Appert and Mike Weber and Mike, Michael Pekka, you know, as they handled things in Rochester last year. Um, but it didn't just start this morning, right? Like, there was significant discussion about this yesterday, yeah. and you guys came out on the ice uh, ready to work today. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, definitely a lot of preparation going into this. So, yeah, it's definitely a lot different uh, pregame skate than what we do in Portland. That's for So sure. you did special teams, and from the look of it, you were in the bumper position in the middle of the ice on the power plate. Uh, is that a place you feel comfortable? Where do you like to play uh, especially on the power play, are you more of a half wall guy and that front guy, bumper guy? Like, where do you like to be? Uh, yeah, last year I was uh, I switched off between bumper and net front, so okay. I'm kind of comfortable in those two positions for sure. I like that. As far as getting the contract done, when you were drafted in the seventh round um, back in 2021, what were your expectations? you know, as far as how quickly something like this could come about. And then when the dream is realized to actually put pen to paper, uh, how do you how do you put it all into context? Yeah, for me, after the draft, I just, going back to Portland, I just wanted to get, uh, get better every day, try not to think about contract situations and stuff like that. Just go every day, play my game, and then hopefully it all falls into place. And then uh, eventually getting that deal done, it was kind of kind of surreal uh, especially where I come from not very many people uh, sign NHL contracts so it's definitely an exciting exciting day for me and my family that's for sure. Tell, tell us about your hometown then. Uh, it's very small Surus Manitoba about roughly 2,000 people but wow so yeah but there's there's been a lot of great hockey players come out of there so 
but yeah, it's very small. So you signed this summer. Um, when I signed my first NHL deal, I luckily had got called up as an emergency junior call up during the season. And on the last day, I was like, oh, we have bad news and good news. The bad news is you're going back to juniors. The good news is here's your contract, sign it. And w then when I returned, er like all my junior teammates were so excited because I came back with a contract. What was it like for you this summer when you signed your contract? Uh, the, the text messages, the calls from your teammates, your buddies, what was that like in your life, in your bubble? Yeah, it was definitely, definitely crazy. Uh, I think for the first little bit, I was just supposed to keep it quiet till the team announced it. And then I just <laughs> had my phone down and I looked and I had a bunch of text messages and everything. So then, it, yeah, it blew up. And especially all my teammates back in Portland, it's like a brotherhood there. So yeah. they, they all loved it. With Tyson Kozak here at Prospects Challenge. Uh, so is does the sign, the road sign in Souris, Manitoba, does it have some prominent names on it like home of uh no not really but uh one name that does come to mind was uh aaron rome who played for vancouver mm -hmm. and then uh yeah the rome brothers um andy murray who's a yep. a coach in college i believe now oh so. yeah andy I had legend him the, in the game <laughs> dude i had him at the world championship and uh, so at the time he was coaching St. Louis, I believe, but he was also LA's coach for a long time. Um, very, very uh, a stickler to details. Would slide in the game prep, like the pre-scouting underneath your hotel uh, room door the night before. <laughs> and he would leave it out a little bit, just that he would walk by like early in the morning to see who took it out and studied it the night before because if it still sticks out underneath the door, he knows yeah. nobody's paid attention to it. Yeah. So kind of things like that, you know, the old Scotty Bowman exactly. signing of the stick. So um, Andy Murray was definitely, definitely good. So, but let me just go back to, okay, so your minor hockey, obviously in Manitoba, when did you leave? How far did you have to go? How old were you when you left home and had to decide like, okay, I'm gonna have to move out of, of my area to be able to pursue a career? Yeah, um, fortunately for me, like Bantam and uh, U18 was all like in my hometown okay. basically. So uh, I was thankful for that. And then I moved to Portland when I was, I played a little bit at 16 and then I finally moved out when I was 17 and then have been there ever since, so. Was that hard like to, because some guys leave at 14 and 15 and they maybe don't know any better. Yeah. Now when you're 16, 17, you have a group of friends, high school buddies that you know, your wit, was that hard to leave? And, and you didn't leave five hours down the road. You left a he, long way You basically down the spend the width of the Western Hockey League. Exactly. Yeah. You went from as far east in the Western Hockey League as you can to the farthest west you can in Portland. So was that, was that tough to leave at that time? Yeah, it was definitely tough for the first, like, couple weeks while I was there. But fortunately, I knew quite a few guys going in from Manitoba. I think we had, like, five or six guys from Manitoba. So... And then, especially with all my friends back home, they were leaving for hockey that year too, so it, it kind of made it easier. That's pretty good. Remember who Michael Pekka was talking about the most back at development camp? Uh, this guy? This guy. Yeah. I'm he, sure you heard about that, right? Yeah. He didn't call you a unicorn, though. I'm disappointed by that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, well, he also doesn't have ink like a unicorn on there. That would, yeah. that would actually be very much self-promoting. Um, but I... What, what is it like when you hear um, such glowing terms and words from a player who lived the experience the way Michael did, meaning how he actually excelled at the game? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It definitely, it's, it was very surreal to hear that from him. Like, he's, uh, he's one, of the, one of the great hockey players that ever played the game, so... Uh, it was definitely, it's hard to put into words, really, how mm -hmm. I felt, but yep. it, was, it was awesome. So this, obviously, you being drafted in 21, you were a late birthday, you're December of 02, so you were drafted a year later. But this technically would be your last junior year um, it, to go back. So what are some of the expectation goals that you have for yourself going into what would be your last junior year before making the jump to Rochester, Buffalo, who knows what's going to happen? So what's... What's your goal set at for this season? Uh, for me, I kind of just want to echo what I did last year. I think I had, a, I had a good season, and I'll be one of the older guys this year, so kind of try and help them lead those young guys and 
help them push them in practice and in the weight room help them get better so we have a I think we have a fairly young team this year so it'll be interesting to see how we so the leadership year. role is really well, like you, something that you're you're you wanting to build this year you captain yeah. or co-captain I was a co-captain last year okay. with uh, a 20 year old so right and you're captain this year I believe so yeah yeah it hasn't made official yet ah. you see <laughs> just like when he signed his contract like he's got to keep it quiet okay. for a little bit so okay. he doesn't want to say it okay but he's got to keep it quiet so. so why do you believe the coaching staff has chosen you to be in this position last year in this um I think for me it was just how I uh practice and play I play I practice at 110 percent and I play at 150 percent so like I give it my all every day on the ice, off the ice, and uh, just try and help everyone. This may be harder to answer, but based on all the talk around this organization and the high draft picks, most people focus on the first rounders and the skill set. Do you notice a difference in how you play the game when you're around guys? I realize there hasn't been a lot of game situations yet with this group. But I guess what I'm asking is, do you clearly identify how you fit in potentially down the road in this organization? Um, for me, I think I'm more of a, a physical player, a guy that uh, is committed to the D zone and block shots and can play the penalty kill and stuff like that. And I think those, the top end picks and all those guys, they have just a lot of skill. So I think that's where I need to uh, kind of surpass them is in that area of playing physical and stuff like that what about anybody on the prospect challenge roster that we need to find out more about like we, we're getting to know you our fans are getting to know you now we saw Matt Picard doing interviews in the hallways with a bunch of the guys so anybody else that you're like oh this guy like he's got a great personality that the fans are going to need to know that maybe somebody you've known for a while or somebody you just met recently like is there somebody that stands out uh yeah i think uh matthew savoy he's a he's a great guy okay. and uh atlee calvert also a great guy a couple couple of western league boys yeah, so okay. yeah i got a lot of high praise for those guys <laughs> matt savoy had a bunch of buddies at the draft this year we got to meet them <laughs> savoy's boys the savoy's boys they uh they were having a good time so i would think that matt probably uh is the kind of guy that gathers a group together and gets it going so that's good i like that do you have family that will be watching the live stream of tonight's game um i believe so uh i'm not 100 percent sure but I'll, I'll have to let them know <laughs> and, and who would that be if they have uh the proper access which they should oh, to tonight's game it'll be a lot i think all my grandparents uh cousins aunts uncles and my parents for sure so. fabulous now how often did they ever get a chance to go out to portland uh and and see you play um, we usually do this uh, parents weekend out in Portland, so they usually come out for that. And then if not, I think almost every family member would be watching our games on WHL Live. So yeah, and then I get I think, a, a lot of text Do you have that subscription, Duffer? Because do, it, Brian has a subscription nah, for no, no, every no, no, no. one of them. No, no, we know Chris Baker is the, is the guy. Uh, we, it's, it's hard enough watching every NHL game and then almost, you know, every Amherst game as yeah. well. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's not enough hours and in the day. Uh, all the uh, Bandits, the National Lacrosse League uh, team. Oh, yeah. So what's those? the secondary sport for you? Uh, it's always been baseball. Oh, oh yeah? Good. Yeah. So do you have a team that you uh, still root for? Blue Jays for sure. Oh, <laughs> the hottest team in the American League right now. Yeah. What position did you play? I was a shortstop and a pitcher. Okay, good. Any like special pitches that you had, or straight uh, heat every time, or? Yeah, nothing crazy. Just straight heat and a curveball. That's about it. Uh, just you did only you, need two. That's did you only. find your way to any major league games growing um, up? Um, been to a Twins game and a Blue Jays game. So. Yeah, nice. Can you explain? Uh, we have a radio and television audience right now, so the radio is going to require a little more detail. Can you go into detail about uh, the ink on your left forearm? Yeah, this is just a uh, compass and the coordinates to my hometown, Cirrus. Very so, cool. Wow, that is really cool. Always, like your roots, yeah. always brings you back to, like, and grounds you to your, uh, to your hometown. What, what prompted like that. that, other than obviously love and connection to home? Um, I'm not totally sure. I just, I just kind of wanted to get one, and then yeah. it felt like a good idea for get these well what is your hometown like you said it's a 2,000 people it's small but 
what is the the life like when you grew up going to school after school what type of things did you guys do over there during uh, you know some of the long winters but also summertime yeah especially uh, in the winters usually we'd uh, in between classes or during lunch we we have an outdoor rink right beside our uh, school so we'd usually go there all the time and then uh, during lunch kids here in buffalo are like what <laughs> like you guys had time to lace up the skates and go out there during lunch yeah but i love it yeah and then uh, in the summers uh, there's a river that runs through the town so we usually go uh, sea doing stuff like that and then there's a lot of golf and most uh most of me and my friends would play baseball in the summers yeah. so uh you really uh play triple a baseball so you'd put like the hockey that. stuff away all summer and focus on baseball and then pick it back up later in the year yeah yeah when we were younger yeah that's good i, I think that's an important piece that people kind of forget at a young age is it's become so specialized that they want to do hockey 12 months out of the year even you know young guys like you now are saying look I kind of just played baseball. I, I developed myself as an athlete playing baseball. I think that's really important. Tyson, we are out of practice. We have kept you uh, way too long on a game day. What? So uh, good luck tonight. Thank and you. Uh, we definitely thank you for the time. Yeah, thank you very much for having me.